She was the lone survivor of a deadly plane crash, killing everyone on board, including her fiancé, and was left stranded in a hostile jungle for eight harrowing days. This is the story of Annette Herfkins. Annette Herfkins was born on April 29, 1961, in Maracaibo, Venezuela, to Dutch parents and grew up in the Netherlands. Annette attended law school and started working as a banker. Along the way, she fell in love with a man named Willem van der Poss. Annette was a trader and Willem was a banker. The nature of their jobs made seeing each other complicated. By 1992, Willem was working in Vietnam while Annette was based in Madrid. That November, they arranged to meet up in Vietnam. After their joyful reunion in Ho Chi Minh City, Willem announced that he had a little surprise for her, a five-day getaway to Na Chang. On November 14, 1992, Annette and Willem got ready and were excited for their getaway. That was until Annette saw the plane they'd be taking to get there. The aircraft was a Yakovlev Yak-40, a three-engined jet airliner built in the Soviet Union. The small size of the aircraft, as well as the age, gave Annette a bad feeling. She felt so claustrophobic that she initially refused to board, but after a little convincing by her fiancé, she settled into her seat alongside the other passengers. Vietnam Airlines Flight 474 took off from Tan Son Nat International Airport and was headed to Na Chang. Only six minutes before landing, things took a turn for the worst. Flying at a speed of 300 miles per hour, the plane lost altitude and hit trees along a ridge of Oka Mountain. Inside the plane, the sound of accelerating motors could be heard. Then, there was a gigantic drop, and everyone on board began yelling. Annette and Willem looked at each other, grabbed each other's hands, and everything went black. When Annette came to, she heard the sounds of the jungle around her, along with the moans and cries of the few remaining survivors. She felt heavy like something was on top of her. She was underneath a seat, with a deceased body still in it. Twenty-five passengers and six crew members were either dead or dying, all around her. Most died on impact, some injured by the seatbelt, causing their ribs to go into their lungs. A little ways away, Willem was still in his seat, his face white with a smile upon his lips. Annette lowered herself out of the wreckage, off the mountain, and onto the jungle floor. She suffered twelve fractures in her hip and two in her leg. One of her lungs collapsed, and her jaw was hanging loose, with the bone showing through the wound on her chin. While most of the members on board died on impact, there were a few initial survivors. Annette was accompanied by a Vietnamese businessman, but his health was declining, and it declined rapidly. The businessman, along with the other survivors, died one by one, leaving Annette alone in the jungle. To survive, Annette made the agonizing journey to the plane's wing to pull out insulation material, which she used to collect drinking water. In the days following, she remained in the same spot, using yoga breathing techniques to cope with her collapsed lung and surviving off the rainwater. As days slowly faded by, her kidneys began to fail and gangrene set in. She gave herself a deadline for staying in the same spot. If no one came to rescue her by that time, she'd go and search for food. On day 8, 192 excruciating hours later, a local policeman stumbled upon the scene. Thinking he saw a ghost because of Annette's skin tone, he initially ran off, but soon came back to help, and Annette had finally been rescued. She was taken to a hospital in Singapore, where she began to recover from her injuries. In addition to her physical injuries, Annette was also mourning the loss of Willem, her partner for 13 years. On December 10, 1992, she attended his funeral. She was brought into the church on a stretcher and saw Willem for the last time. In search of normality, she returned to her job in Madrid and later married a colleague. They had two children and would later settle in New York City, where Annette focused on raising her family. Decades later, she wrote a book about her story, which came out in 2014. Each year, she marks the anniversary of Willem's death, and now also the anniversary of her late ex-husband's death, and counts each day for the next eight days, each sip of water as well. Annette is currently living a hopeful life in New York City with her children. Just as in the jungle, she focuses on the beauty of what she has, not on what was lost.